What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to talk about brew methods for coffee. I'm going to preface this by saying this is just going to be a general overview of what I have liked to do. Um, this is going to be like part two uh, of the Pens and Tea Does Coffee um, type series. Um, let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to do a detailed review um, of each method. I'm going to talk about three and there are three very different brewing methods. So in the last video I talked about um, what to look for when you're buying coffee um, and I plan on um, going further in that series as well with what to look for not only when buying coffee but like within the bean itself. But I thought I'm going to keep it easy and <laughs> just dip my toe in little by little. So let's start with the first method I ever actually tried when brewing coffee, and that is the French press. So this one happens to be pretty large. Um, it's a glass container that just sits inside this like metal thing here. There's a million different kinds of French presses that you can get. Um, there's a million different sizes, brands, everything, but the basic principle remains that there's going to be some sort of carafe and or jar jug typically glass I've seen some that are plastic I would recommend glass over plastic but that's just me then there's going to be a plunger mechanism uh, with varying degrees of um, mesh of fine um, metal mesh that is going to be covering uh, that plunger hole um, and that's about it. That is very basic to what a French press is. So pretty much what you do is you grind your coffee, um, you put it in here, and then you boil your water um, to whatever temperature you like, whatever grind size you like. As with all of these, there are general recommended recipes um, or grind settings that you would like. Um, Sorry, my cat just jumped down the window. I don't know if you maybe saw her shadow, uh, but I think she might want out. There are um, general guidelines to, to grind sizing, um, anywhere from fine, medium, coarse, whatever. Um, that is up to you uh, and your taste. So experiment with what you want. Um, what I always recommend is find a reviewer that you like um, or a, a recipe that has a lot of um, positive reviews about. Start with the grind setting that they suggest and then move every time you make it move coarser and coarser and coarser um, until all of a sudden it tastes bad and then just move slightly back and that will be the perfect grind setting uh, for the perfect extraction. That's something that James Hoffman um, mentioned in a couple or well, many of his videos actually. Um, he's pretty much my go-to guy for, for a lot of things coffee um, and that's something that I did try and do and I found works great for me. So for me I generally use with my grinder uh, like a, almost like a medium uh, coarseness. I've tried medium fine but I don't like this silt that you can sometimes get in this. So anyways, put your coffee into the jar, fill it up. Yes, baby. I'm sure you can hear my cat meow. Um, you fill it up with uh, however much water you want. Um, just pop the top back on, let it brew again for however long you want. Um, I've seen recipes go as low as two minutes. I've seen as high as five. Um, it's gonna depend on how strong you want that coffee. And then you plunge down, all of the coffee beans um, will be trapped in this layer here. Um, and then all of your clear liquid, well, not clear liquid, it'll be coffee, <laughs> um, will be in above that. And then you just basically pour into your cup and then you have a cup of coffee. Um, pros to this is it makes a decent size amount of coffee, especially if you're one person, this is gonna be a lot. Um, another pro is that you can find multiple sizes of the French press, um, so you can really fit your needs. Um, another pro is it's 
super simple, uh, very, very simple. Um, and it's classic. I mean, it's been around forever. Um, all, to be honest, most of these are. Um, so I do like that you get a fuller bodied um, cup of coffee. The metal filter in the French press will let a lot more of the oil, um, the natural oils that come out of your coffee into what you actually consume. So it's going to be a fuller bodied cup. Um, keep in mind that for the most part, the very last little bit you'll have will have some, some grit to it. Um, so don't drink 100% of what you make. So keep that in mind. That's a very general overview of the French press. Uh, like I said, leave a comment in the comments down below if you want to see detailed reviews of all of them. I know we're talking about coffee, but this is peppermint tea. <laughs> Then the other one, we're actually going to go on the complete polar opposite side and we're going to go into a pour over style and we're going to go into one of the original pour over styles happens to be my favorite out of the three I'm going to talk about. And that is the Chemex. So the Chemex, um, you will actually have a paper filter that sits in this top portion here and that's where you're going to put your coffee and that's where you're going to pour all your water through. So unlike the French press, the water doesn't sit and percolate in the uh, coffee. There's no immersion brewing. It's a drip filter. So water pours over the coffee, drips into the basin, and then stays there. Water pours over the coffee, stays with the coffee until you press the plunger and you remove the grinds from the water. So immersion is going to get you a lot thicker, fuller bodied, the Chemex is going to be able to filter out some of those oils. The Chemex is famous for having very thick uh, filter paper. So it takes a lot of those oils out, which for some people is a big negative. These are pretty polarizing as far as, you know, people are concerned when it comes to their coffee. I prefer that. Um... I don't know if it's because I started as a tea drinker and tea is a much more delicate flavor. Um, and that's maybe why I prefer the Chemex because it does take out a lot of those oils. So I have a more delicate flavored coffee. Um, you can taste a lot more of the coffee attributes um, with a Chemex than you can in a French press. You can kind of play around with both to get similar-ish experiences out of both, um, but I do prefer the Chemex. So with the Chemex, like I said, you're going to have your paper filter, and Chemex makes their own. You're going to have your paper filter that sits um, in here. Um, you're going to grind your um, uh, grinds, <laughs> your coffee, to about a medium fine, um, and then you're literally just going to pour your hot water in. There's a hundred million different ways that you could pour over um, your coffee. If you fall down that rabbit hole, good grief, you're going to find a million and one recipes, but very, very basic. Um, so it stays all up here. And then, of course, it filters through. This is a six cup um, carafe. So it'll make six cups of coffee, a.k.a. it'll make two regular size cups of coffee. Like it'll probably make two and a bit of these. Um, when it says cups, it literally means a cup, like 250 mils. Whereas like the traditional mug um, that, you know, we North Americans typically use has closer to like 16 ounces. <laughs> um, so then there's definitely the Chemex and the Chemex looks beautiful. I actually don't use this one very much anymore. Um, I have the one that actually has the glass handle so you can pour it uh, very similar to, to this. Um, this is very classic looking, um, but sometimes it's a pain in the butt to hold it, especially when it is full, it's kind of heavy um, and you can't get the, the wooden pieces wet. So sometimes to wash it is a pain in the butt with the, the collar on it, um, but with the um, glass uh, handle one, easy peasy. It's also easier to clean the Chemex than it is the French press, um, but I'm not going to get into either of those. So those are the two sort of polarizing, the two that have been around forever. And then there's this guy. 
<laughs> Definitely not as elegant looking as either of those options. The AeroPress. Oh my goodness, has this changed the game for me. Such a weird looking dude. <laughs> so essentially, it comes in, oh, it just fell out, comes in three main parts. So you have a basket, a plunger, and then the brew chamber. So basically what you do is you take the basket, you take, uh, AeroPress makes paper filters. They also make metal filters. So again, kind of go both ways. Uh, you put the, I have a paper filter uh, in the basket there, um, pre-wet it, all that kind of stuff. Again, that's recipes. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, you screw that onto the bottom, put your coffee in the brew chamber, fill it up, and then when it's done, basically, you plunge. So you just push, 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 and boom. Then all your coffee comes out into your mug. Obviously, this is over top of your mug. You're not just pushing into nothing. Um, and then all the coffee is in your mug. You're good to go. You literally just finish popping this out. Ugh, it's hard to do when it's dry. There you go. And then you can see here how the plunger actually comes outside of the brew chamber. So what it does is it automatically pushes out the entire puck of coffee. You just rinse it all and you're done. Walk away, your day is good. <laughs> um, so it's the easiest to clean. There are an infinite amount of recipes that you can make with this. It's very travel friendly, whereas these are not. These are bulky, they're gonna get in your way. <sighs> yes, Parker, I know. Uh, it's gonna get in your way. This will do you wonders. So the beauty of this is that it's a lot cheaper than both of those options, actually. <laughs> this I think is about like 40 something dollars in Canadian money. Um, and you can literally brew either way. So uh, you can brew the traditional way. So this is your cup. This sits on top of it. I won't put it like completely on because I have tea in there, but basically it just sits like that. The coffee and water percolate in here and then you plunge down. Or you can leave the coffee basket off, right? And you can invert it. So this is the plunger, right? So traditionally like this or you could invert it. So you put the plunger in, then you put your coffee in the brew chamber up against the plunger. And then, um, you know, you can just let it sit and mingle and do all of its things. Because the first way is gonna get you more of a drip, right? Second way is like this. So when it's done, you've, you've let it all brew together like you would a French press. Then you put it on your basket. Then with your mug, you're gonna flip it over and then you can press it out. So it's really versatile um, and that's amazing. Um, I took it to my cottage for Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, I loved it because I no longer had to drink gross coffee. <laughs> um, I like to say basically like Keurig coffee is like, you know, ground beef. Whereas like these methods are like making yourself a filet mignon. You know, why would you have ground beef when you can have a filet mignon? There's still a time and a place for ground beef like when I have to be up before the sun, <laughs> but when I can, you better believe. Personally, because I prefer the Chemex, I prefer to do the drip style method and I actually double up my paper filters. I have not tried the metal filters yet. Um, I will eventually, <laughs> um, but there are two size metal filters. So again, very high level. Um, I feel like I should do a <laughs> detailed review of all of these already, but it, believe it or not, it's already been a 14 and a half minute video, which is crazy. I was expecting this to be like six minutes. So, <laughs> so that's a very high level overview of the three styles of coffee brewing that I've really dipped into. So there's the immersion coffee, uh, method with the French press. There's the drip uh, pour over style with the Chemex. And then there's the jack of all trades AeroPress. 
I highly recommend all three. Um, the downside to this, uh, I sung its praises, but the downside to this is that you literally can only make like eight ounces of coffee. So if you're the kind of person that wants to make like a crazy amount of coffee in the morning, either you're, you got a whole family that you're going to have coffee or you yourself drink multiple cups of coffee. Um, you may want to go one of these two. Um, still though, for the price, it's pretty cheap. Um, I would still recommend picking one of these up and, and giving it a go because this is endless possibilities with recipes, but that's the one downside. It's really the only downside. I mean, it doesn't look very pretty either, but I don't really care because it's so good. Um, so guys, I appreciate you watching the second series of uh, pens and coffee. <laughs> um, let me know, you know, if you do want to see a detailed review uh, of any of these, all of these. I'm probably going to do them anyways, but I won't if you all say that you don't want to see them. <laughs> um, you seem to have pretty good reaction to the last video that I did. Um, so guys, hit that like button. Let me know if you like these coffee videos. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more like it. Uh, new videos come out every Monday and Friday um, with the occasional car Q&A on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Guys, as always, I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.